Hey there, you looking kind of cute. Please consider subscribing and check out our Patreon for more. Enjoy the video. I won my school's costume contest. It had been great, and I was very content when I went to sleep last night. Now it was morning, and I was still in bed with Raggedy Ann. It was trick or treat time today. I knew I wouldn't be able to wear the wedding dress again. My cousin Joanne and I agreed that I would only wear it to the contest. I chose to get up, eat breakfast, and talk to my mom about this. Good morning, sweetheart. How did your sleep go? As I sat down at the table, mom asked, I slept well, mom. May I ask you a question? What am I going to do tonight? I don't want to ruin Joanne's dress for trick-or-treating, I asked. You could call Jeff and ask him what he's up to. Mom told me. I like this idea. I called Jeff on the phone. It's Donnie here. This is Mrs. Grant. Is Jeff awake? I'll wait, okay? How are you, Jeff? Hey, Donnie. Yes, last night was great. You make a pretty girl, too. I am going to ask my mom. Mom? May I visit Jeff's? I inquired. First, I need to talk to his mom. I gave the phone to mom. Hey there, Jessica. Lois, do you agree that the girls should get together today? Okay, okay. I need to ask Donnie. Do you mean Donna? Yes. Yes, her new name, right? Ha <laughs> ha. Jeff, I mean Janet Lynn, would love to hang out with you today and tonight for trick-or-treating. Is that all right? Mom asked me straight out. What? <laughs> I mean, yes. I'm going to change and come right over. I yelled as I rushed to the bathroom to take a shower and spend the whole day looking like Donna Ann. It was going to be fun. After getting out of the shower, I went to my room and looked in the closet. What should I wear? Sometimes it was really hard to make these choices. Four times, I looked through my clothes. I finally chose to wear a blue shirt with a lace collar and a blue denim skirt my mom had bought me. I thought, this will look good with my white nylons and Mary Janes. My bra was in the washer when I went to get dressed. Mom, how can I get dressed when my undergarment is in the washer? I got a call. I bought you three bras, so check your drawer. Two more should be in the drawer, still wrapped up. A light pink one and a light blue one. Once I was done brushing my teeth, I was ready to see Janet Lynn. I put on my Mary Janes and went to spend time with my mom. Donna is very pretty. Get home for lunch, please. Let's talk about what you're going to wear tonight. Mom told me as I left the house. It hit me on the way to Jeff's house that this was the first time I had been out by myself as Donna Ann. As I walked down the street in a skirt, my neighbors stopped to chat and rake leaves. It felt weird. Most of the time, they didn't even look at me as I walked by. It could have been the beautiful fall day. It was nice, but I don't know. I went to Jeff's house and rang the bell at the front door. Janet Lynn came to answer the door. She wore a skirt and a blouse for everyday wear, if we took a good look. Two of the girls in our school class would have thought we looked like each other. Hi, may I come in? I inquired. Sure. Donna, you look good this morning, Janet spoke up. Mom wants to see you, so come into the kitchen. We went into the kitchen together. Hey, Mrs. Grant, good morning, I told you. Hi, Donna, good morning. You look beautiful today. How did your sleep go? Because of all the fun, I thought you might be up all night. Mrs. Grant laughed. You know, I was up a little late, kind of going over the day again in my mind. Hey, Janet, why don't you two go talk in your room? I need to do some things and we'll see you at lunch. The stairs were shown by Mrs. Grant. Janet and I laughed as we ran up to her room. When we got there, we sat on her bed and talked about everything that had happened, from being girls for Halloween to getting our final hair, makeup, and nails done at the salon. Don, I love being a girl so much. I don't think I want to be a boy ever again. Janet said it. It's been enjoyable. I like it too. As I walked over here, I noticed that everyone smiled at me. That was not the same. But I don't know. Being a boy can also be fun. I told you. You might be able to beat me at basketball if I always dressed like a girl. Janet made fun of her. Play your Atari. Aliens were zapped after Jeff set up his Atari on an old black and white TV that his parents gave him. We got tired of doing that pretty quickly. We could play for hours most of the time, but today it didn't seem right to zap aliens while skirted. May I see your outfit? I asked Jeff. It's in this closet, Jeff said as he opened the door to the closet. 
Wow, what a shock. Not only was the costume there, but there were also girly clothes in about a third of the closet. In the closet, skirts, tops, dresses, camisoles, a coat, and sweaters were all hung up neatly. There were four pairs of shoes on the ground, all of this on top of what Janet was wearing. I was so shocked that I think my mouth was open. You remember that, I said I wasn't sure if I wanted to be a boy again, Janet inquired. Yes, I believe you now that I see your closet. Where did all of these clothes come from, I inquired. Some of them are really cute. I chose to be a girl for Halloween three weeks before you did. My mom and I got some things to see what I'd look like as a girl. Mom says I look pretty when I dress up as Janet, so that's that. When my mom saw how good I looked, she told me I had to learn how to act like a girl so this costume would work. I've been Janet as much as possible for over a month now. I've done a lot of shopping, been to church, and had dinner with my parents. My mom made me go to ballet twice a week to improve my dance skills. While you were here or when I was at school, I mostly lived as Janet. Janet spoke up. You like being a girl a lot? I enjoy it too, but not as much, I think. I also did the shopping thing a few times. I only had dinner out with you at Taco Bell. My parents told me that I should take a break from being Donna and just be Donnie for a while. Those were the times I came over to play with you. It looks like we're about the same size. May I try on your costume? Could my mom help you try on mine? Yes, of course. She took off the costume while I took off my stuff. The long green full top slid down my body, and I draped it in the right way. Then Janet helped me put the dress over my head, and it fit perfectly. It looked good on me when I looked in the mirror. Donna, that color isn't quite right for you. I believe I possess a dress that would look better on you. Look around, it's here, Janet said as she took out this very pretty party dress in the color rose. The skirt was tiered and had little cap sleeves and a built-in sash that could be tied in the back. The neck was round. I carefully took off the green costume and put it back on the hook. Then she took off the whole thing and put it back in the closet. I put on the rose dress. It did make me look better than the other. Janet, you have a lot of nice things here. Let's have a fashion show. It's been on my mind to make some things for someone other than my parents. Janet said with excitement, that's what we did. The whole morning was spent trying on dresses, skirts, blouses, and sweaters. After that, we'd try to walk up and down the hall like the models in Paris. We laughed a lot, and we laughed even more when we tried to stick out our hips and make the fashion industry classic bored duck face. Mixed things up for each other, some worked, some didn't. We did our catwalk anyway because we were fashion models. Too soon, Mrs. Grant knocked on Janet's door. I thought it was nice that she knocked even though it was open. What have you two been doing? A lot of people are laughing up here. She spoke with a smile on her face. Mom, we were just putting on a fashion show for each other. Donna and I would pick out clothes to wear and then use the hall as our runway to walk, Janet said. I'm sorry to ruin the fun, but Donna's mom called to let me know that lunch will be ready in 30 minutes. That long to hang up all these clothes, I think. It sounds like you and your mom might be a little late. I'll call your mom back. Girls, get to work. Janet and I put all the clothes back in the closet while Mrs. Grant called my mom. We still laughed and made fun of each other about our supermodel fashion show as we walked down the stairs to my house. Janet could say goodbye when we went by the kitchen. Goodbye, Mom and Dad. Have a nice day, Janet said. Goodbye, Mr. and Mrs. Grant. Finally, I want to say thanks to Mr. Grant for his help at the contest last night. For some reason, I think it helped me a lot. They heard me. Donna, thanks for your help. You looked beautiful as a bride. Are you going to wear that outfit tonight for trick-or-treat? It was Mr. Grant who asked. No, I told my cousin I wouldn't dirty the dress, so I need to think of something else. I told the Grant family. Now move along. Donna's mom is waiting for you two to come in for lunch. We were told to leave by Mrs. Grant. All the way to my house, we talked and laughed about our fashion show as we walked down the sidewalk. Mom told us to wash up because lunch was ready when we got in. It made us laugh to think about the morning as we ate. Girls, what's so funny? Mom inquired. We showed off Janet's clothes in a fashion show. I think we looked pretty silly at times when we tried to walk like the models. It was a lot of fun. Mom, I told you. 
You could keep the show going here if you want to. Mom told me. Could I try on the wedding dress, Donna? I know you said to be careful, but I had this thought. Janet stopped talking. What do you think, Mom? I inquired. You're not going to go out in the mud in it now, right? Once we're done with lunch, okay? Mom gave a smile. Are you sure? That's wonderful. Thanks, Mrs. Jones. Janet was thrilled. We were done with lunch and helped our mom clean up. After that, mom told us to put Janet in the wedding dress first. Our afternoon would be free to do what we pleased. The dress came out of Donna's closet when we went into her room. In just her bra and underwear, it was my job to help her put on the dress. It was easy for her to take off her black nylons and put on the white ones when her mom gave them to her. First, let's do your hair and makeup, mom said. It was a simple updo, which is what she called it. She then put Janet on a chair. Janet's mom had swept her hair off her neck and piled it on top of her head. Then she used the curling iron to make long, curly tubes around the back and sides. Then she told Janet to take it easy while she put on lipstick, blush, foundation, powder, eyeshadow, eyeliner, mascara, and eyeshadow. Janet looked very nice. I gave mom my sandals and she put them on when she was done. The dress then came. It was easy to put over her hair and zipped up. Mom put the flesh-colored panel back together and told Janet she was ready. Janet's mom told her, you look beautiful. I feel great. The contest was won by you, of course. With this dress on, you can't help but feel like a girl, heard Janet exclaim. Mom put the veil on Janet's head after I gave her the bouquet. That's when we taught Janet that slow halting step that brides do as they walk down the aisle. I guess that was enough fun to be a bride for one day, Mom said. You two can do whatever you want after we put the dress away. As Janet took off her dress, she looked sad. Mom also helped her take off her makeup with cold cream and brushed her hair back out. After that, she left us alone. Let's have a second fashion show since you're still half-dressed, I told her. Okay, show me your closet. Janet smiled once more. I don't have nearly as many girl clothes as Janet does, but we were able to try on all of them. Also, our runway walk was getting better. Putting your hip out is just a way to look bored. We still laughed about it. We were done with our show and talking and listening to the radio on my bed when our mom called. It's almost time for trick or treat. Donna, have you chosen a costume yet? Oh, yes. I told Joanne I would keep the wedding dress clean so I couldn't wear it. What am I going to do, Janet? I was scared. Why don't you just go as you are? Janet asked. Your mom could put on makeup for you today so you look like you did it. That pink top is in my closet. I'll put that on and we'll go as you two friendly girlfriends. That made Janet look good. Okay, now you change. Mom will help me and we'll meet at five, I told her. Janet said goodbye to my parents in the kitchen. She then went to get ready for tonight. After a light dinner with my parents, I told them what we were going to do. My mom offered to help me put on some light makeup to make me look older. To make sure they were going for the same look, she called Janet's mom. After that, mom put me down in Donna's room. She started by putting a thin layer of foundation on my face. It was then set with a powder. She brushed off the extra powder and then began to do my eyes. She took some eyeshadow out of her purse. She wiped my eyelids, and then the area between my eyelid and eyebrow while I closed my eyes. Like Carrie, Mom blended the two with her finger. Before she put the eyeliner on top of my eyelashes, she used a gray eye pencil below them. In the end, she put on mascara and combed my eyelashes afterward. My mom put coral blush on my cheeks and blended it in. Then she gave me a coral lipstick and told me to put it on my lips. Putting on lip gloss during last night's contest helped me get pretty good at this. Like my mom taught me, I wiped my lips twice. After that, I looked at myself. Wow, I look great. Hey, mom, thanks. I liked how I looked a lot. My mom did the laundry today, so my favorite outfit was clean. I quickly put on the pink blouse and skirt. I put on my Mary Janes and was good to go. The doorbell rang right then. My dad called to tell me that Janet and a young princess were here to see me. When my mom and I got downstairs, Janet was waiting for me in a pink top and a skirt. Her makeup looked a lot like mine, and she was dressed like a princess, complete with a hat and a veil. Janet said, this is Katie Winslow from next door. 
Katie's mom asked if we could bring Princess Ariel. Mom thought it might look like two girls were taking a younger sibling out. That is a wonderful thought. Katie, do you know who we are? I inquired. I know Janet is really Jeff. I may not know you, though. Katie talked. My name is Donna Ann tonight, but when I take off my makeup and dress differently, I'm really Donnie, Jeff's friend. Remember me? I inquired. Tonight, you're Donna and Janet. Katie pointed to all of us and said, Here you are. Watch out, all three of you girls. Do you have a flashlight? Do all of you have a goodie bag? Okay, go. Mom was just checking things out because she was a mom. Trick-or-treating starts early in our town, so the little ones don't stay out too late. Katie was glad she didn't have to be driven around by her mom. We began at Wilson's, which is right next door to my house. The doorbell was answered by Mrs. Wilson when Katie rang it. What a princess. What a beauty. And two young women to take you places. You both look great. Donnie, I can't believe that's you. You look really nice. Mrs. Wilson teared up. How did you understand? I inquired. Your mom just called to tell me. It got out even though I told her I would keep it a secret. I'm truly sorry. Uh, is this other girl also a boy? She inquired. Yes, sir. My name is Jeff Grant, but now my name is Janet and this is Donna. Do you know our Princess Katie Winslow? Jeff replied. It's great to meet all of you. You two look like girls so much. I really don't believe it. I'm calling your mom again to tell her how great your costume is. Have fun as you run. We were told to leave by Mrs. Wilson, who then shut the door. For the next hour and a half, we went from house to house. Everyone liked Katie's costume and told Janet and me how nice it was that two older girls would show a younger girl around. We felt good after all the praise. Katie was finally tired, so we took her home. We took Katie and Mrs. Winslow thanked us. Katie told her mom that our next door neighbor was the only person who knew we were boys. Other people thought we were girls. We left Mrs. Winslow and Katie's house after saying goodbye. The whistle woke us up from our talk about all the people who thought we were girls. We turned around to see who blew the whistle and saw Dracula, a hobo, and a clown. Why are you two beautiful people going out on this night? Dracula asked. If you're not careful, you might get bit on the neck. Oh, yeah. Janet and I laughed because it was a bad accent. I believe you should work on your accent, I informed him. After that, we went back the way we came and went to Janet's house. Three boys ran by us and then turned around to get in our way. Boys, get in line. Janet and I gave each boy a kiss on the cheek as they stood in a line across the sidewalk. We then walked past them and went to Janet's door. Good night, guys. Have a good night. We both waved as we walked into Janet's house. We began to laugh as soon as we got inside. Mom of Janet came in to see what was so funny. She laughed, too, when we told her. Are you going to tell them on Monday? Mrs. Grant inquired. We might wait to see if they first brag about it. Donna, since it's after nine, you could stay here tonight and leave in the morning? What Mrs. Grant suggested. That's great! I and Janet both yelled at the same time. We laughed some more as we looked at each other. Mrs. Grant asked my mom if I could sleep over and got permission. Janet and I hurried upstairs to get dressed for bed. We did what our moms taught us and left our hair down, but took off our makeup. Janet had extra slippers that I could borrow to go with the white nightgown she gave me. Then we went downstairs to watch TV. The sleepover was fun. Even though there were only two of us, we watched scary movies, ate popcorn, and talked about taking Katie out and those silly boys. At some point, we passed out on the couch and dreamed about all the fun we had had over the last three weeks. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out Patreon for a lot more content and early access to YouTube videos.